Hey guys, JV Sphere Freak here, back for another Ultimate video. And today, I'm going to be giving you my endgame guide for Shulk in Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. But before we jump into that, if you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss out on any of my future videos. Finally, spoiler warning for the seventh party member of Xenoblade Chronicles. You have been warned. So Shulk is the very first party member you ever play as. He is the default glass cannon out of the party, meaning he deals huge damage but has little in the way of defences. He has one of the lowest HPs just behind Melia and Charla. Shulk is a mix of both ether and physical arts and in general is average with his base stats. However, Shulk wields the Monado, which itself carries tons of utility providing you with damage and defence. Because of his average stats, you can slightly build Shulk in whatever direction you need him. He can become a tank with a few different gems or a healer that can keep everyone alive. Regardless of which way you build him, however, he's always going to be really healing it. I recommend focusing on Shulk's strong areas first after putting in the necessary gems such as agility up, night vision and spike defense. If you want to avoid damage onto this character, a form of reduced aggro is also recommended. However, auto attack stealth isn't really needed as the majority of the aggro will come from his arts. Therefore, aggro down is my recommendation to prevent aggro from his arts and healing which can be used very regularly. The remaining gem slots can then be used for whatever role you want Shulk to fill. I recommend and use a singular ether and strength up gem to maximise his damage on both sides, adding to that versatility. For the final two gem slots, I'd suggest a double attack gem and an initial tension gem, but you can realistically replace these for your own more preferred gems. You should try to avoid topple up gems on Shulk, as Monado Cyclone can be very unreliable with the delay from pressing the art to actually getting the topple. Haste isn't always necessary as well, because the Glorious Future skill removes the need to build the talent gauge in a rush for every vision you get. Haste will obviously still increase your overall DPS though, so it still can be useful on different builds, so try to experiment with it. Make sure you don't put Aura Heal on, however, as Shulk is the only playable character in the game without an Aura, meaning you'll get no value from the gem. Attack stability and attack plus gems are equally not recommended on any of the weapons you can use, as the damage range is small anyway. Depending whether you're playing New Game Plus, the Monado 3 will be the best option in all circumstances. It provides an incredibly high crit rate, a good block rate, and the highest possible damage of any weapon. With the right skills, the weapon has a guaranteed crit rate, allowing for a lot more damage and opening up many strategies to follow. If you're without this crucial weapon, however, your options are one of the six replicas. Only the Rudra and Dogma are really worth using, though, depending on how important your crit rate is to you. Yeah, we can do I it! I don't like this crap! Definitely no in the can. Uh, Very happy to be throwing this away. Crit rate? No! Crit rate? Now I gotta tell you something. Crit rate? It's good for me. This is very good. You're gonna be going to Colony 6. If you have the Monado 3, make sure to put the Critical Drain skill on, as every hit will guarantee a crit, and therefore give you 2% of your HP back. This paired with Ultimate Strike and Ardent Strike allows for a lot more damage, as well as resulting in more survivability and damage than ever before whilst constantly raising your own tension. Showdown stance is great as well on every character, as all the super bosses are stronger than yourself, giving you a big boost in power at the beginning of the fight to swing the odds in your favour. This helps more so with Shulk though, when it's paired with his previously mentioned well-rounded stats. Explosion of Energy can be a great replacement for the initial tension gem, as every talent art 
will raise Shulk's tension by one, and with every vision refilling his talent gauge, he should be able to maintain his tension permanently. The Hero Pun's Make It All Better skill is also excellent, as most hits from the super boss will have you and your party members under 50% HP quickly, so the bonus he will get will get a lot of use. You also probably want to equip Lightweight Expert, as you mainly want to run Lightweight Equipment on Shulk to provide as much agility as possible for his accuracy in DPS. However, if you are running a different build, make sure to attach the relevant skill to that armour. Make sure not to use the skill Vision Mode though, as most of the arts after a vision will be for defensive utility, such as shield and armour, which would waste the bonus effect. You also don't require to equip any of Fiora's critical bonus skills, as you'll already be guaranteed a crit. You more than likely also won't need to attach Unyielding Heart or Nonchalant Heart if you have the previously mentioned skills equipped, as it will be very unlikely that you would drop tension in the first place unless a party member is defeated. So change the future in that case. Next time you have a vision, you tell us. We bear the burden together as a team. Uh. You have a vision you don't like, we'll change the future together. For the same reason as before, don't equip Sustained Spirit or Arcane Aura. Just don't. Other than those, use whatever skills best help you to complete the build you are using. A combination of the Monado 3, Critical Drain and Gloriant provides quite an effective tank build. With a max HP gem and the right defensive gear, Shulk can absorb quite a large amount of damage. Every hit with the Monado 3 will recover his HP and a combination of light heal and Monado armor puts you in a comfortable position. The haste gems on the glory gear allow for rapid hits to recover HP over and over again. Monado arts are a crucial part of Shulk's kit to get right. Use your talent gauge for damage and extra utility, as any vision you get should fill that talent gauge to full, allowing you to defend yourself from anything. You shouldn't really be using Eater, as most of the super bosses and high level enemies don't really apply buffs to themselves, resulting in not much value being gained compared to arts such as armour or purge. Enchant is a close second for the worst art, However, the bonus damage and the sheer duration of 140 seconds at level 10 can add up and can be quite a nice passive buff. All of Shulk's arts, bar battle salt, are crucial parts of his kit. The most important aspects of his kit, however, are his party gauge capabilities, and thus this is what you want to focus on. Shadow Eye also can double up as a temporary damage boost without the aggro reduction as well, becoming a nice boost to a big backslash. Shulk's arts are also crucial within topple locking parties, as his options to inflict break and daze reliably and keep that type of party topped up with doses of healing are invaluable to the team. After all that, it's pretty much rinsing through the arts. All of Shulk's offensive arts at max level have a 20 second cooldown, meaning you can quickly repeat art after art, providing lots of spam potential. Shulk's flexibility allows him to fit on many different teams. The most crucial member for Shulk, however, is Fiora, as her whole fifth skill tree only works if Shulk is in the party. Fiora is also equally as flexible as Shulk, which gives you an immense amount of options in the party you can build. Fiora and Shulk have good synergy in terms of arts as well. Both have options to inflict break, topple and daze. Both members also have many options to build the party gauge. The third member can then be a physical member to topple lock, ether base to maintain reliable damage, or someone like Ricky to keep the options open. Physical parties tend to synergize best however, as they all work well together in chain attacks and have arts which synergize together. Compared to an ether party, where Shulk has no purple arts to link in and can only provide strong ether attacks via his talent art, the previously mentioned characters plus Dunban were my choice for when I decided to go super boss hunting.
Shulk's strengths are his versatility to do pretty much anything on any team and still have a huge impact on the fight ahead. His huge damage potential with his ability to stop almost any attack thanks to his visions gives the player infinite ways to play and still be very effective against any enemy. His only weakness is a certain girl. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you find this video useful, please remember to subscribe as it will help my videos to get out there so I can help other people as well. Also, leave below your favourite meme or funny moment below and I'll attempt to work them into one of my future videos. Also, tell a friend about my channel. The quicker I grow, the quicker I can provide you guys with more great content. But until next time, see ya.